coming into the season, coming into the season, many people rightfully had him. I didn't like the back end of their defense, as you know. But many people had the Dallas Cowboys as the top seed in the NFC and the representative of the NFC in the Super Bowl. Their one and three start made me think that this defense was absolutely what I thought it was, to use a Dennis Green phrase. Hmm. They are who I thought they were. And nobody was coming to help. Earl Thomas is not coming to help. They just needed to get a more front-end pressure and get it done and turn this season around. That is now not even close to their toughest issue. It's amazing how things work in the NFL, folks, about how things quickly can change, about how one snap of a football can change a team's trajectory and, of course, a player's livelihood. And Dak Prescott deserves better from the football gods. Dak Prescott, who had been putting together almost, what, 2,000 yards passing in the first quarter of a season. <laughs> he was the reason why the Cowboys were even 1-3. and three. He was one of the reasons why this team even had hope for the future because of the way the defense had been playing, even though they had been 1-3. and three. That and the fact that the rest of the division is such an absolute abomination that 1-3 and three was still only a half game behind first place and yes because it is an abomination the Cowboys are still right now as we're sitting here their first place team and I don't know who is going to surpass them looking at the rest of the landscape even with Andy Dalton as their starting quarterback now that Dak Prescott has broken his ankle and it has been surgically repaired and he's already on the mend but to see him carted off in tears with his right leg in an emergency wrap, okay? It's devastating. Seeing him driven off the field is one of the saddest images you can conjure up in one of the saddest years that we've had in a long time. It's just another 2020 are you effing kidding me moment. Are you kidding me? So wrong. So not right. And I send my best to him. His recovery apparently is uh, already on track. He's had surgery. He's out of surgery. They're calling it a minor problem to a major setback right now. That he's coming out of surgery and he's going to be back four to six months. He's done for the year. And again, Andy Dalton, this is why the Cowboys went and got him, is just in case this happened, because as we know, Dak took over for Romo one year, and that was such a major shock to have somebody that young perform so well that Romo became a broadcaster within a calendar year. So rare. But we were looking at an Instagram of his brother, photograph of him with Dak smiling from a hospital bed. He deserves better. And I just want to say this on this front. If anybody out there feels the same way I do about Dak, but wouldn't have felt the same way about Dak, if he had told Jerry Jones, I am not coming unless you give me a long-term contract. If you would have thought, he's just not really a team player, he's not really, he's a being about himself. Please, to use the Michael Irvin phrase that he said back in the day, Google it if you want to know the circumstances around it. Don't lose that intensity. I want you to use the same intensity Michael Irvin once said to the media about reporting on one of his moments as a player. <laughs> Don't lose that intensity. Do not lose that intensity that you feel about Dak right now and the sensitivity and the empathy you feel right now. When any other player says, I'm not coming unless you give me contractual security. I know we're talking about money. We'll never, all of us, 
most of us in the sound of my voice are watching me right now on Peacock streaming, will never see this type of money. We'll never see it. But they have every right to it because of the business that they've chosen. So don't lose that intensity of empathy right now when a player tells a team, I'm not coming unless you give me the security I need because Dak Prescott, I'm loving hearing that everything's fine and dandy with his foot. But this is just day one on a very long journey for him. And I look forward to the day that he can come back like Alex Smith did yesterday. All he has to do for inspiration is just look in division. And we'll discuss Alex Smith a little bit later on. But you just never know. And I proffer to say the Dak Prescott injury right now will change the way that players view playing on the franchise tender forevermore. I think players across the league are taking note. And I know, again, this is a very elite group. It's a very select company of anybody who gets franchise tagged. But uh, I'm telling you, they're looking at Dak getting carted off and saying, I know he's getting his millions, and that's a lot of money. That is a lot of money. But look at what Mahomes got. Dak does not have that for his future right now as he is sitting, staring at his surgically repaired, torn up, broken ankle. Hey, he's just the third quarterback to go into the season playing on the franchise tag. Cousins, of course, and Drew Brees. Cousins is lucky that he's able to continue on and keep getting that guaranteed money like he's Garrett Cole and not get hurt. And Brees is at the end of his career. But Dak is a totally different story, and I only wish the best for him. I'm feeling for him. I'm thinking of him. I know he's got millions in the bank, and that is great. But he's on a franchise tag tender. And that guy got carted off, and I'd love to see him back. But the Cowboys are still talented enough to win that division. Still alive. And this is why they've got Andy Dalton. Andy Dalton's won the AFC North with less than what he has at his disposal. He's thrown for 4,000 yards in this league. Uh, so that's why they've got him. And I know a lot of people like to slag on him, but he's not Dak. And I'm sorry, Cowboys fans. And again, folks out there, thinking, think about this very moment the next time some other player decides to get his and withhold his services for it. 